Amazon's Prime Day breaks sales records, Oculus VR acquires Pebble's interfaces, some updates on the meltdown over at Reddit, and more. It's Thursday, July 16th, and this is Crunch Report. Ye old earnings season continues, and today our big standout is Google. Perhaps you've heard of it. The company beat expectations with its second quarter financial results with revenue at $14.35 billion, that's excluding traffic acquisition costs, and adjusted earnings per share of $6.99. Revenue grew by 11% compared to the year ago period, and its net income expanded. It's pretty good news. Total profit on an adjusted basis stands at $4.82 billion, and Google has $69.7 billion in cash. Not a surprise, Google was up in regular trading and ended the day worth $390 billion, and the stock was up quite sharply in after-hours trading. By the way, this is Google's first quarter with its new CFO, Ruth Porat, who's probably having a pretty good day. If my Twitter feed is any indication of overall sentiment, people thought Amazon's big Prime Day sales event yesterday had a lot of bad deals, a lot of stuff that ran out really quickly. But that didn't stop it from breaking sales records for the company, even exceeding Black Friday 2014 sales by 18%, which Amazon says until now had been the biggest Black Friday to date. Customers ordered 34.4 million items across prime eligible countries, which comes out to 398 items ordered per second. Amazon also reports worldwide order growth increased by 266% over the same day last year. Although last year it wasn't heavily promoted as Prime Day, that's new. In fact, you can think of it as yesterday technically was the first time that Amazon just made up a holiday with discounts on its own products and services along with other merchants. Amazon sellers saw their unit sales up by 300%, and more new members tried Amazon Prime than any other day in Amazon's history. Because of these great numbers, Amazon will do Prime Day again next year. Shocker! Oculus, which was acquired by Facebook last year for $2 billion, just made its own sixth acquisition, Pebbles Interfaces a computer vision specialist based out of Israel that lets users see their own hands and fingers in their field of virtual reality. It kind of makes the whole thing seem more real. Terms of the deal weren't disclosed, but the Wall Street Journal reported it at $60 million. Pebbles was already one of the many developers that had built technology into Oculus's headset, so the union makes sense. Oculus says that the Pebbles team will join its hardware engineering and computer vision teams, quote, to help advance virtual reality, tracking, and human-computer interaction. Pebbles was founded back in 2010 and has stayed relatively under the radar, at least compared to other VR startups. Until now, anyway. Reddit's new CEO, Steve Huffman, has a big job ahead of him and held an AMA, that's an Ask Me Anything, Q&A on the site this afternoon and said, among other things, that Reddit will take a firm stance against bullying, harassment, and content that encourages violence and will hide, quote, the worst content from its site. If you spent any time on Reddit, you know that that is truly the worst content in the whole world. Reddit is also introducing the NSFW tag, or not safe for work, which will be applied to pornographic content. And anything that the company says, quote, violates a common sense of decency, this classification will require a login, must be opted into, and will not appear in search results or public listings, and will generate no revenue for Reddit. Also now off the table, anything that incites harm or violence against a person or group, and anything that harasses, bullies, or abuses a person or group. What kind of subreddits do that, you might ask? Well, for example, r slash raping women will be banned because it encourages people to rape. However, r slash coontown will simply be reclassified as NSFW because, as Reddit explains, the content is offensive to many, but does not violate the current banning rules. As for how Reddit plans to enforce the new rules, Huffman says, quote, we won't formally change our policy until we have the tools to support it. Giving moderators better tools to deal with individuals is an important part of this process. Giving our employed community managers additional tools to assist the moderators is also required. Good luck. You gotta hand it to the Uber team. They have cojones. Two weeks ago, the company organized a rally to protest a proposed bill in New York City that would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission, or TLC, to severely limit how many new for hire vehicle licenses get issued, which would then limit the number of drivers that Uber and other ride-sharing companies could have on the road. The bill is designed to last for a year while the TLC completes a study on the impact of for hire vehicle services on the city. 
Now, obviously, Uber does not want their growth limited. That's all they want to do is grow. And today, they're taking their fight directly into their own app. The company just added a de Blasio's Uber feature. It's a real feature. Now available for over 2 million New York City users that will either always show no cars available or wait times of 25 minutes. The point is, this is a terrible idea, right? But that's not all. Instead of actually calling a car like the app normally would if you decide to choose this feature, it'll prompt you to send an email to Mayor de Blasio and the city council opposing the new bill. Uber tells TechCrunch that this will, quote, demonstrate what life for New York City riders would be like if de Blasio's plan to limit Uber is passed into law, which obviously is one step above death. If it passes, Uber will only be able to add 201 new drivers over the next year. The company says currently they add more than that to the Uber NYC platform every week and that de Blasio's Uber would cost 10,000 jobs and make the Uber experience worse for everyone. And that is the report for today. A lot of news today. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. See you all tomorrow.